In 1987, we got to see the release of Masters of the Universe, based on the popular He-Man toy line and cartoon series of the 1980s. The film starred Dolph Lundgren, Courtney Cox, and Frank Langella. He-Man was a successful toy line and comic book series in the early 80s. As a successful cartoon series it would spin off with the release of the She-Ra series. We even saw video games, a role-playing set, and children's books too. Unfortunately by the time the movie was released, the toy line was already in a decline. The movie opened third at the box office and grossed $17 million on a $22 million budget. The movie should have been released at the height of its popularity. Some consider it a cult classic, but was poorly received. Missing characters, too much time spent on Earth instead of Eternia, making it too much like Star Wars, it just didn't work. There was a real sequel in development, but was cancelled due to the high cost of the Mattel license, and the studios decided to film Jean-Claude Van Damme's film Cyborg instead. How can we fix this movie to have some of the plot points of the original, less guns, while making it more true to the mythos? It would begin with a great war between the forces of the Sorceress and Skeletor. Skeletor manages to win and take over Castle Grayskull. Prince Adam is one of Skeletor's captives during the war. Since Skeletor wants to find the Sorceress, he uses Adam and says he will slaughter his family if he doesn't find her. Adam manages to find the Sorceress with the help of Man-at-Arms and Tila. Skeletor's forces are close by and before she's captured, the Sorceress tells Adam that the only way to save Eternia from Skeletor is to find the Power Sword. Long ago the Power Sword was in the wrong hands and was used for great evil till the evil was destroyed and the sword was placed on planet Earth. They must find the wise Orko. Skeletor's forces arrive and capture the Sorceress however Adam with his friends manage to escape in time before they were taken in as well. They meet Orko who says that a portal key was created in case the sword was to be found again, but it could only be used once. They will have to find someone named Corrigan who was promised to keep the sword. But they only have a little bit of time, they must find the sword within 24 earth hours or the portal will close. Adam agrees and with his friends they enter the portal. Little did they know that Evil Lin, Triclops and the Beast Man were following our heroes and enter the portal too. Our heroes are lost till they meet a high school student named Julie who is willing to help find someone named Corrigan. We get introduced to her as an orphan who can find no record of her biological parents. Little did she realize that her own classmate named Kevin who has an interest in her, has the last name Corrigan. They meet with Kevin who says he has no idea about some sword, but he knows that one of his ancestors believed he was visited by some aliens and he thought it was all nonsense. Kevin wants to help them find the sword and he takes them to an ancestral home of his family. Meanwhile Evil Lin manages to capture Julie and demands she find out where the sword is. Back at the Corrigan ancestral home, Kevin says he just doesn't know where the sword is till he notices that there is an engraving at the center of the family graveyard on a cross. They break it to find out it reveals a sword from beneath the ground. Adam takes the sword and he becomes He-Man saying, by the power of Grayskull, I have the power. A storm arrives in the city and it rains due to the power of the sword. Evil Lin captures Kevin with Julie and run off just in time after He-Man takes down both Beast-Man and Triclops, their bodies vaporize. Evil Lin heads back to the portal as well as our heroes. Meanwhile Skeletor has been harnessing the powers of the Sorceress, till He-Man arrives and demands that Kevin and Julie be free, as well as the Sorceress and all of Eternia. Skeletor laughs and says whoever this man is he is no match for him. He-Man easily takes out Skeletor's forces in the castle. He-Man and Skeletor finally duel and it's a longer fight, better choreographed. He-Man manages to defeat Skeletor who escapes humiliated as our heroes save Eternia and the Sorceress. Evil Lin is captured. Kevin and Julie decide to stay in Eternia together to chronicle this world so they could find a way to return to Earth one day to tell the people of what they've seen. He-Man says that Eternia may be saved but Skeletor is out there, while Tila tells He-Man that they'll always be there to stop him. We get to meet Adam's royal family, who are told that Adam fought bravely and died saving Eternia, as He-Man keeps his secret intact. The post credit scene ends with Skeletor on a mysterious world meeting the evil Hordak, and requesting his help to take over Eternia. This would set up a sequel that would also include She-Ra and would pave way for a spin-off movie about She-Ra. The movie gave out hints that Julie may actually be Princess Adona, She-Ra herself, 
who was taken to Earth when she was an infant. What do you think of this fix? Comment below. Like, subscribe, and thank you for watching in the plot.